right, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, the latest physique update from Jay Cutler, seven weeks out from the end of his transformation, where his goal here is to get in the best shape that he's been in since 2013 when he stepped away from stage, so 10 years. And although this posing clip that we got from Jay is rather brief, I think this is the most impressive update that we've seen from Jay to date during this transformation. Now, we haven't seen one. It's been a couple weeks now since we've gotten an update from Jay. But I think that time was well spent. And the thing that really jumped out to me the most about this posing video was how insane his legs looked. Front and the back. His quads were just crazy deep, separated, big. He had striated hamstrings. It looked really good from the sides, from the front, from the back. He's had really crazy looking legs here, and I think this is, you know, some of the better legs that we've seen from him over the past 10 years. I think he really is realizing his goal here. Now, he did confirm in a recent episode of the Cutler cast that his goal for this uh, Romania show is to take his shirt off on stage. He still says he doesn't really want to specify or doesn't know for sure yet if he's going to be actually doing a full-on guest posing in posing trunks. But I'd say from the looks of his legs here, I think people would really like to see that. I think a lot of people would really like to see this question answered of how good can a 50-year-old retired for 10 years Mr. Olympia look like? How good can he look during this transformation? And he's really starting to look pretty good. And not only does he look more cut and more separated, and you can see these crazy details and lines in his legs, but to me, he looks bigger here fuller and more cut and he's still got seven weeks to go so i'm pretty impressed by what we're seeing from jay so far um, and i think he might be one of the most exciting points of that masters olympia weekend is to get to see the final product of this transformation i really think the end result of jay doing a guest posing in posing trunks maybe putting on a pro tan would be as entertaining if not more entertaining than the masters olympia itself just based on the lineup that we saw so far but let me know what you guys think about how jay cutler is looking in the comments down below now next up in the news this weekend obviously is the big orlando pro show a lot of people looking forward to seeing the final form of hassan mustafa Hopefully getting some redemption on that stage, getting his Olympia qualification and picking up a win. Posting this recent update showing off the definition in his back just days away from stepping on stage. And honestly, Hassan is a real freak. I mean, this guy, pound for pound, the amount of muscle that he has packed onto his frame overall really is pretty insane. And I honestly feel that he's he's a bit underrated. I mean, maybe it's because he's not as big of a name. Maybe it's because he doesn't have the prettiest structure. That midsection kind of gives him a blocky look to his physique. But if you're talking about a freaky, just ultra-muscular bodybuilder, it doesn't really get much more freaky, full, round, and muscular than, than Hassan. He's insane. He's a bodybuilder's bodybuilder. And like I've been saying, these recent showings from Hassan, conditioning-wise, are some of the best we've ever seen in his career. The past couple years, he's been getting better and better, and I think really he could be a factor at the Olympia as a possible top 10 guy. And we already talked about the Orlando lineup a couple of videos ago, and it honestly doesn't seem like a lineup that Hassan would have too much trouble with unless he was really off here. And I really feel like this Orlando Pro is going to be Hassan's show to lose. And I'm like I said, I'm not going to be shocked if on Saturday we're going to be saying Has announcing Hassan won the show. But let me know your predictions for the Orlando Pro Show in the comments down below. Now, next up in the news, we also got an 18 weeks out physique update from your 2022 Mr. Olympia runner up Derek Lunsford. And I said this with the video that we got from him and Samson posing together. I was impressed with how big Derek looked like relative to Samson, Samson being a 330 plus pound guy in the off season, being a much taller guy, a much more imposing frame, even with Derek next to him, Derek still looked bigger than I expected. And Derek on his own, I think you see that same thing. He looks big. There's no denying that. And that's really the main thing that I think when I see these updates of Derek. And it's kind of the opposite of Hassan, because we talk about Hassan being this ultra muscular guy, but maybe not the prettiest structure. Derek looks big and he's got a ton of muscle, but he's got a really nice structure, hence why he was runner up at the Olympia. And I think that possibly the time that he took off by not doing the Arnold Classic was time well spent really growing into this Olympia, putting on some size. Because keep in mind, the last Olympia, as hard to believe as it might be, was only his first Olympia. Actually, it was his first open show at, in general at all. The previous year, he was still in 212. 
So just keep in mind what he was able to do from that last 212 Olympia to the 2022 Olympia as far as putting on size. And just think about how he might utilize this next year or the rest of this year between the last Olympia and this year's Olympia. Because it seems like he's adding a pretty significant amount of size without sacrificing any of the aesthetic strong points of his physique. Could we see Derek wind up being the next Mr. Olympia or a future Mr. Olympia? Looking at updates like this, it really doesn't seem too far outside of the realm of possibility. Now, next up in the news, a recent update from Quint Beastwood, an imposing update from Quint Beastwood. He says, soon the whole world will know, and he tags Matt Jansen, who he's working with as his coach. The last time we saw Quint on stage, I believe, was last year's Texas Pro. So we haven't seen him in a while. But you talk about a physique like Quint Beastwood. You've got to put him in that same conversation as an Andrew Jacked or a Samson Dowda. He's a guy that gets over 300 pounds in the offseason. He's a big bodybuilder, a tall bodybuilder, beautiful physique, great structure, small waist, insane V taper. Overall, pretty complete. I would say the thing from the last time we saw him on stage that I would want to see him bring up is his back development. But for such a young guy with this kind of frame and this kind of size, I think he has a tremendous amount of potential. And I think the next time that we do see him on stage, he's going to be dangerous. And I think he's a guy that in the next couple of years is going to be in that conversation. I mean, think about how quickly Andrew Jackson, and Samson Dowda became in the conversation as potential Olympia winners. People are talking about those two guys as potential Olympia winners where a couple of years ago, people weren't even talking about those guys as being able to win a show like the Arnold Classic. People didn't even know if Andrew Jack could win the Arnold Classic Amateur to win his pro card just a couple years ago. So think about how fast that conversation developed. And I think you could see a similar thing happen with a guy like Quint Beastwood once he starts winning shows and really hitting his peak. I think he has the makings of a serious contender. Now, speaking of physiques similar to Quint Beastwood's, Andrew Jacked also posted a physique update. We've kind of gotten spoiled over the last couple of days with physique updates from some of our favorite guys. Andrew Jack posting an update here, this time 137.7 kilos. He still hasn't officially announced that he's doing the Texas Pro, but I'm pretty confident that that's the show he's doing based on the information that I have. And for the record, 137.7 kilos translates to 303 and a half pounds. And again, beautiful physique. A structure that most bodybuilders would kill for. Abs, a midsection that most bodybuilders at that body weight will never have. That's the reality of part of why people talk about Andrew Jack as being so good. And, and the reason he's such a fan favorite. Because the size that he carries with the midsection that he has. And I know we've talked about this multiple times. But there are very few bodybuilders in the world that will ever have abs or a midsection that good and be 300 plus pounds ever. It just doesn't happen. But Andrew Jack, he makes it look easy. He makes it look natural. It's just him. He's big with a great midsection. And it's just not something you see every day. And it makes him really stand out. And granted, he is a taller guy. And you can attribute some of that body weight to that. But even still, I think it's incredibly impressive. Now, the final story that I've got for you guys today on his Instagram story last night, Terrence Rough and Rough Diesel confirmed that he's actually doing two shows prior to the Olympia and he's going to be announcing them in July. Now, he posted a recent physique update where he looked like he was in really good shape. So I would imagine the first of those two shows is going to be sooner rather than later, probably before the end of the summer. And then maybe he might do one closer to the Olympia. Tampa, maybe Chicago. I'm assuming it'll be a relatively big show as far as the classic physique division at that show goes. It's weird, though, to talk about Terrence as a guy this year that has to qualify to get back to the Olympia when he's been runner-up so many times and he's been in the conversation for so long as a potential you know, Olympia title winner. It feels unusual talking about him even doing a show outside of the Olympia, and it feels even more unusual talking about the fact that he has to to even get back to the Olympia. But obviously, this is Terrence Ruffin we're talking about. I don't think he's going to have any trouble winning whatever the two shows are. I don't think it matters a whole lot which shows they are. Because part of me really does still feel like what happened to him at the Olympia in 2022 was a little bit of a fluke. And I don't think that he's going to uh, repeat that placing this year. I think he's going to be back in the conversation for top three. I think it had less to do with his physique and more to do with him missing weight. I think it I think it was more 
that whole situation at the last minute and not so much Terrence as a bodybuilder. I think as far as the physique that we're used to seeing from Terrence, what we know he can bring, he's still one of the top three classic physique guys in the world. I, I do believe that. And he's still arguably the best poser or one of the best posers in the world. And I hope that we get to see Terrence back on the top of that mountain this year at the Olympia. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below because people seem to be pretty torn on this. A lot of people are already ushering in the era of Urs Kalsinski, the era of Ramon Dino, talking about these guys like Terrence is just done and gone. But I really just truly don't believe that to be the case. I think he's still going to be in the conversation this year. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Make sure you like and subscribe if you have not already. Click that bell notification icon. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.